Hey Lowenders, it's Lowity6 here with another video, and I know everybody is super pissed off with the pandemic right now. If you watch the news, it's just chock full of negativity. In fact, the news will have you convinced that all of America, specifically California, is burning to the ground. Let me check. Yeah, everything's totally fine, don't worry about it. <laughs> anyway, because of all this negativity and uh, you know sour vibes in the air, I figured we'd do a chill out video, and actually this request comes from a dear patron who suggested uh, on patreon.com slash 86 that I do a video talking about all the situations where either in China or in the US being around Chinese people that don't think I can speak Chinese and what I did to react to the things that they said. So I actually thought that was a really fun idea. This is a, a trip down memory lane, but it's also like some fairly recent things that happened too. Now it almost took me about three years to get to a level of fluency in Mandarin Chinese to where I could pretty much participate in every conversation. Now, being in China, if you're a foreigner, um, most people will just assume that you don't speak Chinese, but they'll be more guarded than some Chinese people in America who definitely don't think you speak Chinese. But, but I have stories from both countries. Honestly though, I'm gonna get some of the most common things out of the way, things I don't even wanna bring up. If you go to China, this is like 90% of the things that you'll hear in Chinese. Uh, the first one being, that means like, why are uh, foreigners noses so tall? A lot of Asian cultures are super obsessed with like your nose bridge. In America, my nose is way too big. This schnoz, this honker is just like, it's probably one of my biggest, the biggest things I hate about my appearance. But in China, it's actually like, it's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool bridge. Um, it's nice and tall, it's nice and sharp. But uh, oftentimes, if they see a foreigner from a different country, they'll say, why is their nose so tall? That's something you'll hear on the streets all the time. Uh, another thing that you'll always hear, and this is not, not meant to be offensive because it's just in Chinese culture, this to point out physical features like this isn't a big deal, but you'll, you'll oftentimes hear like, why are foreigners so fat? That means, why are foreigners so fat? And the obesity rate in China is much lower than most Western countries, so oftentimes they'll see some you know, people that are working in China or tourists in Beijing or something, and they'll, they'll say, why are they so fat? Um, and thank goodness those tourists usually don't understand what they're saying. Honestly, the most common thing you're just gonna hear is like kids and actually everyone say, why Guren, which just means foreigner, and like point at you, or Lao Wai, which is, you know, my, my name on YouTube, which means foreigner as well. And although you'll get like maybe some English majors or something, like uh, university students that are English majors, they'll ask you like, where are you from? Oftentimes people will just guess or assume where you're from. You'll say like, Nikan, Nikan yo That's the most common thing. If you're white, you will get Chinese people all over the place being like pointing and saying, oh look, there's a Russian person. That was like the go-to thing. I don't know why that's the go-to thing, but particularly if you're up north, they'll be like, look at the Russian over there. But honestly, like all of these like things that you overhear, most of it's positive. Like if you're a foreigner and you're in a, in China, the most one of the most common things you'll see you'll hear is, oh, how shuaya, which means, oh, really handsome. And it can get to some people's heads because, I mean, if you're walking around the US, people aren't gonna be walking around going like, wow, look at how handsome he is. It's just not something people say. But being in China gives you that like advantage of pe people assuming that you don't speak Chinese, so you can hear a lot of crazy stuff. So that's like the most common stuff, right? It actually reminds me, me and my friend, we used to get so tired of people like calling us Russian. We're not offended to be called Russian, but it's just like, we we're like, can you guys stop? So we'd always go to the park or do whatever, study Chinese or hang out or do whatever, like skateboard or ride our bikes. And all the time we'd hear people say, oh, Nikan, and like, look at the Russian. And we eventually got tired of that. So I'd be like, oh, which means I'm, I'm from Thailand. Um, and then if people would assume our jobs, people would say like, Nikan, uh, which means like, oh, look, there's an English teacher. If they see like a young 20, 30 something year old, like foreigner, they'll automatically assume that they're probably an English teacher, which we were <laughs> at the time, but I get tired of that. I would say like, correct them. I'd be like, which means like, I'm no, I'm an astronaut. And I never got anyone to be like bullshit. Like everyone's like, wow, that's, that's cool. <laughs> And my friend, uh, uh, he would say, well, he'd say, I'm not Russian. I'm from the Soviet Union. Um, and nobody ever corrected us on that. They're like, oh, Sulian. Actually, if you talk to some of the older people in China, they'll automatically assume, um, if they don't say you're Russian, they'll automatically assume that you're from the Soviet Union. So I've actually heard that. That was a joke we thought we made, but actually older Chinese people often say, oh, there's a Soviet Union person. Not, either not knowing the Soviet Union collapse or just like that's kind of what's embedded in their mind. 
Now, I remember this one. I told you guys, like, pretty much every time you'll hear, like, wow, oh, wow, shui, hope you liang. Oh, so handsome, so pretty. But one time I was in the elevator, and <laughs> there's this couple. This is in China. And there's this couple, a married couple. And uh, quite a portly dude and his wife were just standing there next to me. And the elevator's, like, one of the best places to have these conversations because, like, people will just, they'll just shoot their mouth. Like, they really don't think you can understand. And uh, <laughs> it was actually really sad. I got so, I got absolutely blindsided by this. Like the dude turns to his wife and he says, "Oh, why you why you going and shui?" Which means like I I always thought that foreigners were handsome. And I was like, "Oh my heart!" You know, after all these like compliments get thrown at you all the time. And his wife turned to him and replied and said, "Doya, doya, is da. Why is this old guy and those actors not different? Which means like. Why is he different than those actors? I think she was referring to like maybe American movies or like Hollywood and stuff. Because that's actually the assumption a lot of people might have. Their only interaction with like a foreigner might be like once or twice in their lifetime, if, especially if they're not in like a major city. So their only interaction with like foreigners or people from the West are on movies, right? Uh, so that was like a devastating blow. <laughs> Dude, it was like a knife and dagger in my heart, but it was necessary. You gotta stay grounded. You gotta stay grounded, of course. And actually, my my rebuttal to that, you know, you know when you're like laying in bed, and you're like, you're thinking about situations how they could have gone differently. I came up with like such killer comebacks, like such devastating comebacks. Later that night, in the situation, I actually turned around and I just said, "Shishia," which just means thank you. And I I I tried to be like sarcastic about it, but I was actually just really sad. <laughs> You know, it's funny. You might think that they would have been super embarrassed or super like, oh man, he understood what we said, right? But they just turned around and they said, oh, you speak, you speak Chinese. Oh, okay, bye. Like they, they legitimately didn't, they didn't laugh. They didn't care. They were, they didn't care at all. There was like no face loss. It was just my heart on the ground. One time uh, when I went back to visit my family in New York, I went to a Japanese restaurant and I went in there to get, I think it was probably like 2 p.m. I was so hot. And I think I think I was waiting for my parents to do something um, in some sort of museum or something down the street. We're in some historic town. And there was a Japanese restaurant that was selling like daytime sushi specials and like cold, super cold, tall Asahi beers in those metal cans. I was like, dude, I, the advertisement on the window works so well. I need, I need that in my life right now. So I went inside and I was just gonna get a sushi roll and a beer. But the whole time when I, I ordered in English, obviously, because I thought they were Japanese, is you know it is difficult to tell if, where, where someone's from until you hear them speak. Some sometimes, um, but anyway, I sat down and I'm drinking this beer, and I'm eating the sushi, and all of a sudden I hear them that the man and the woman that are running this restaurant speaking Mandarin, speaking Chinese. So I just addressed them in conversation. I was like, "Oh, cool, you guys are Chinese. This, I thought this is a Japanese restaurant. Trying to make a joke." And as soon as I said that. The wife or the woman or whatever, she just bolts. She bolts from the counter, literally like runs, like a scuffly run, all the way back, opens the metal door in the back and just slams it shut. And the husband just stood there and like didn't say anything. And I was like, what's, what's going on? And the guy goes like, he kind of like, like paces around up there. And I was like super weirded out. And he goes, oh, you, you speak Chinese, huh? And I said, yeah, yeah, actually I live in China, just visiting my family. I, I teach English over in China. He's like, oh, 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 that's why you speak Chinese. And I was like, yeah, um, you guys get a lot of customers here. I just made small talk, you know, how long you been in America? He's like, oh, we're from Fujian, blah, 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 small talk. And I think his wife, I think his wife ran away because I'm pretty sure she thought I was immigration because why else would there be this random white dude speaking fluent Chinese to them? <laughs> like there's no other customers in there. It's like totally out of the blue. Uh, so I understand why they might be concerned if, in fact, their immigration status maybe was not above board or maybe they thought it was the IRS or something, I have no idea. But that was pretty funny. It was resolved, obviously. Everyone was, she, she, when she came out later, to, uh, her husband was whispering to her and she was totally fine. But it was fun. One of my favorite, my favorites, one of my favorite stories is I was visiting my wife in her hometown down south. And I was living in Inner Mongolia at the time. And I had to take some crappy, I don't know, remember why, but I was about 20 minutes outside the city and I had to take some crappy like local bus, which I never usually did. Um, I would either ride my motorcycle, but I didn't have one at the time down there. Um, and I usually may, would take a taxi, but I can't remember why. I had to take some crappy like local bus. And I was about 20 minutes outside the city in this really like super rundown industrial area. And uh, at, the, at the back of the bus there, are the, uh, there's, I remember there's three kids, three boys. 
and they were probably like five, six, seven years old, maybe like five, six years old. And they were just obsessed with the fact that I had arm hair. So they kept saying like, why so many foreigners have so much arm hair? They were like, why do they, why does foreigners have so much arm hair? Uh, so much hair on their bodies. And they, they weren't asking me, they were just talking amongst themselves. And they were just like speculating and they're like, what? And they kept looking at their own arms like, we don't have any hair in our arms. I'm not even a hairy guy, by the way. I'm pretty bald for a for a white dude. But anyway, long story short, they <laughs> the kids are sitting there and I was just racking my brain. I was like, how can I how can I how can I make their day? So I turned around eventually and I said, and I spoke Chinese to them, which shocked them. But I said, Do you think do you think foreigners or humans that you know in general would have this much hair? Are you joking me? Come on, they're not that much different than you. And and the the kids were like, what? First they were like, what? He can speak Chinese, and I was like, yeah, of course I can speak Chinese. Do you, but really, if you think about it, look at my arm hair here. Do you really think I'm human? And they're the kids are like, um, um. They weren't laughing. They weren't taking the joke. They're like, uh, uh. And I said, what if I was like an ape that could speak? I learned how to speak, but I escaped from the zoo. And the kids just they're like, like mind blown. They didn't reply to me. They didn't say anything. They literally just turned and they just whispered to themselves. They're like, like speculating whether or not that might be the truth. <laughs> that was that was hilarious. I wonder if to this day, of course, they don't believe it anymore. To this day, like if they remember what happened on that bus. Using a VPN has become a daily routine for me as I need to protect my data, my online identity, and much more. That's why I choose NordVPN. NordVPN is a super easy to use VPN service that hides your identity, masks what you're doing online, and also keeps your data safe. But not only that, you can also get around region locks, which are when streaming services only offer certain content in certain countries. So maybe a movie is only available in Mexico or the UK and you can't watch it in the US. All you have to do is change your country and the server on NordVPN and you can get around those region locks. Don't forget that if you go to nordvpn.com slash 86 and you use the code lawai86, you'll get 68% off a two-year plan. And when you use the code lawai86, you can try out NordVPN for one month, totally for free, to see if you like it. I just really like Nord over other VPNs because of its ease of use. I can just hop on, put it on in the background, I don't even have to worry. My internet is safe and secure, and I'm worry-free at that point. Don't forget to go to nordvpn.com slash 86 to take control of your internet again. This one, this next one is super embarrassing. So Winston and I were in Ikea in Shenzhen. Shenzhen's like probably the richest city in China. And uh, they have an Ikea there. And we would go in there to like buy like really cheap pans and little trinkets and stuff for gifts. Uh, whenever we had like, we'd celebrate foreign holidays like Christmas or whatever. <laughs> this is a situation where I didn't expect Chinese people to speak English. And this doesn't happen that often. So we were in line and we had just finished um, filming Conquering Southern China where we went through some really, really impoverished poor areas, beautiful areas, but in, in one of my favorite provinces in China, which is called Guizhou. And in Guizhou, it's, it's very, very, very poor. And I'm not saying the poverty is beautiful, but the underdevelopedness, like the, the fact they still have the old houses, and the rice paddies and stuff, it's a really gorgeous place, but it's, it's quite sad in some of these villages. We saw people you know, with rats, the kids with holding rats that they would cook later. Um, they would go in, like to this communal area and just get a bowl of really cheap like instant noodles before they would walk to school on these dirt roads, totally unpaved, really poor. You can tell a lot of the people were quite malnourished, especially in the minority areas. Um, but I was having a conversation with Winston in the line at the Ikea in a very upscale place. And I said, dude, isn't it kind of crazy? Like you can have a place that is absolute end of the world poverty, like almost Africa level, Lao level poverty out in the countryside in like Guizhou where like kids are eating rats and there's like literally it's mal clear malnourishment and everything's underdeveloped and obviously the, the education system is not going to be up to snuff. And then you come to a place like this and I feel like I could be in Manhattan or London or Tokyo. It's absolutely insane. The level of dissonance, you know, and this woman turns around <laughs> in perfect English, perfect English. She goes, have you ever been to Guizhou in China? And I was like, she's like, I'm from Guizhou. I'm doing pretty well, huh? And I was like, holy, oh, I was like, no, no, no. We just got back from there. It's absolutely beautiful. It's fantastic. But we're just saying that like the difference, I was just like spitting. I was like stumbling on my words because I was like trying to like defend myself. That was super embarrassing. I lost a ton of face. Uh, another time when I was in, I was in Yellowstone. 
uh, and there's tons of Chinese tour groups in the national parks in the U.S. I was with my wife, and we were uh, we were at this geyser, and this Chinese tour group that we had seen a couple times, they kept commentating. I think they were they weren't that interested in the geyser or the park. They were more interested in either like the bison or like the the herds of, of foreigners, like they, they called them foreigners, even though they were the foreigners in, in America, they were literally using the word foreigner. They were saying Wai Guan or Lao Wai to people, like native people in their own country, which is hilarious. It's a very Chinese thing. There was this, there was these two ladies in this group that were talking and I remember one of the ladies said, she was right next to us. She goes, which means like, look at, look at all the foreigners. Why do they have so many kids? Because at that time period, you know, the one child policy was still prevalent. You don't, you wouldn't see in China, you wouldn't see a family with six kids, but you would see that at Yellowstone, there were families with four to six kids, right? Big, big clans, right? And so I turned to her and I said, which means like, yeah, like their government doesn't even care about that. And she like looked at me like a bison in the headlights, like, holy crap, like this, this La Wai just spoke to me in China. She didn't even say anything back. She literally turned around and like went to the other side of the group, which is super hilarious. We were just cracking up. But uh, yeah, I mean, like it's not all doom and gloom. I wanted to leave out all the like the really nasty things I, I've heard. I think I've covered that in different videos before, but I just want to cover some of the more positive and fun stuff. Um, hopefully cheer up your guys' day. I know everyone's pissed off right now. I know that it looks like 2020 is never going to end. But I just wanted to let you guys know that I appreciate your support and I hope I brought a little bit of light into your life today. And I want to say thank you to all my patrons out there on patreon.com slash 6 to actually support this channel and keep it going. About half of the videos that I do get demonetized because they're controversial nature. Hopefully this one didn't. But that's why I appreciate you guys if um, you know, you're know you actually putting yourself out there to support me. We have a great network there. I answer my messages there, direct messages there every single day. Um, and we have a really good thing going. I want to say thank you so much, Law Winners, and I'll catch you on the next one.